Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week three of our course. I wanted to again remind you that I have all of our resources available in my Google Drive folder. You can find the link in the QTI. If I click on week three, module three assignments and grading, I will be able to download that and open it with Microsoft Office. So in here you see there's the link to the Google Drive folder and I'm going to walk you through exercise 31 in SPS here in a few minutes. I've listed the learning objectives for the week and the assignments to be graded. So if you look, you see you have a DQ1 due by Wednesday, a DQ2 due by Friday, and then you will also be graded on participation this week as always. I expect six responses to other students that meet the requirements for substantive um, responding. They're grammatically correct cited and are at least 150 words. So you have two assignments to be graded this week for the 80 point grade. Those are exercises 16 and 17. Those will go along with the information in the study that you are to read in the book. And then we have two assignments for the SPSS portion of your grade this week. It is that 90 points. So I am going to walk you through how to do those assignments. If you could um, go to your Citrix receiver, click on SPSS, and that will open up the SPSS program for you. So while that is opening, I want to remind you that you do have SPSS tutorials available to you through Grand Canyon in your course materials. The test that we're going to be looking at this week is this independent samples t-test, which I'm about to walk you through on SPSS. So the first thing that you want to do when you get into SPSS is you want to open a file from your computer and that is going to be the exercise 31 example data set. So I have saved these all to my computer as I recommend that you do from the Google Drive folder or from the classroom um, under the QTI where I have those. So I want the SPSS exercise 31 example 2 data. This is the data set that does have the wage information. So that is now pulled in my wage information data set, which is the one that I needed. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at my questions here for module three. So I know exercise 31, calculating t-test for independent samples is what I'm looking at. And I like to just look at the questions ahead of time. And I do re recommend that you do that as well. Look at the questions so that you know what kind of test you have to do on there. So when I look at this, it says, do the example data meet the assumptions? Um, that's not anything I can do in the SPSS. If calculating by hand, draw the frequency distributions of the dependent variables wages earned. What is the shape of the distribution? Um, so I know I'm going to need this uh, Shapiro-Wilk test again. I can see that in there. I need the means of the groups, the independent samples t-test variable. Okay, I'm going to keep going here and read. It looks like that might be all that I need there. So I'm going to go back to my SPSS program. I'm going to do the same thing that I've done in the past. I'm going to delete off my bottom set of data here. I'm going to do it for the group zero and the group one so that I have that information. Then I'm showing you how to do everything, but I'm not giving you um, the actual answers to the assignment. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here than we've done in the past. I'm going to go up to Analyze. This time I'm going to go to Compare Means. And I want to compare using the Independent Samples t-test. My test variable is the wages received. So I'm going to send that over there. And my treatment group information is going to be my grouping variable. What are those groups? Well, let's define them. Group one will be anybody with a zero, and group two will be anybody with a one. I'm going to click continue. 
I'm going to check my options just to make sure that I do have a 95% confidence interval in there. Click continue, and then I'm going to click OK. Again, remember that I do not have the same data as you. I just wanted to walk you through how to find this information. So now I can see that I have my wages received. I have my control group and my experimental group, nine members of each group. I have my mean for both of them, my standard deviation and my standard error. And my F statistic. I have my significant value, I have my T-score here, and I have my alpha value or my significance value of 0 0.001. I believe that's enough information to answer the questions. Um, so if we go back, the only thing I think we might not have in there is the histogram and the um, statistic that we um, calculated in the past. So you can see the Shapiro-Wilk test is something that it's asking you for and the frequency distribution of the dependent variable wages earned. This is something that we've done in the past so I believe that's something that you can watch the video from um, week one or week two and go back and find that information on how to do that. The other information that you need in here, the means, the independent value, uh, the independent samples t-test, those are all now in your output table. How do you show me your work? Again, you just right click on your data table, click copy. Now I go back to my module three exercises. And since that one had the means in there, I'm going to click in here and I'm just going to go up to paste. And now I'm going to um, in here, type in that the control group is 127.67. Experimental group, 239.67. But I do have to show my work. I have to show that I used SPSS to get that information. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to gather that information for the t-test and copy that over too. Now remember, my values are not the same as yours because I deleted some data from mine. I do hope that helps with exercise 31. Um, I'm now going to go back and create another video for exercise 32 because that is done a little different. So I have to go back and close out my data and open up a new data set. Let me know if you have any questions.